Hello, and welcome to the uh, GoTo meeting for SOLIDWORKS Composer. Uh, my name is Scott Woods, and I'm the product, product manager for Composer. This is our Hawkridge Systems um, presentation for assembly instructions in half the time. So this presentation is going to be a little bit different than some of the presentations you might have seen um, that I've hosted or Hawkridge has hosted in the past where this is um, a little bit of, I guess we would refer to as uh, e-learning and a little bit of e-demo. So it's kind of a mix between the two, um, going over in detail in SOLIDWORKS Composer how to create a step-by-step -step, uh, step -step instruction um, that could be a, a operation manual, an assembly you know, instruction. It can be many, many things, and this is kind of a general overview of what to do in Composer from start to finish. So before we get started here, um, because a lot of you might be new to Composer, well, I know that we have some existing Composers logged on right now, um, and some that I have probably never seen it before. So just as a general overview of what the product does, is I have this, this process laid out. And this process, I've seen many, many times visiting many, many customers, so it's pretty ironed out. It might be similar to what you're doing today if you are creating any kind of technical documentation. It may be way off. So I try to hit about 80% here. Hopefully uh, your, your process is close. Um, basically what I'm currently seeing when we visit customers is that uh, your 3D models are created in SOLIDWORKS, which is on the left there. We have the PDF at the very end. That's going to be the controlled document. And so the challenge has always been when creating this kind of documentation is to get from step one to, to the last step of the process. And how that's handled is many, many ways. So what I've seen is a lot of screenshots, which this icon is, is symbolizing uh, in Composer or in SOLIDWORKS. So we got, we, got, uh, we got screenshots, and that could be, I'm sorry, the screenshots is here. We got configurations, so that could be, you know, a single SOLIDWORKS assembly with, you know, 18 to, 80 different configurations in there uh, going through each step of the process. Screenshots of that, maybe even, maybe even rendering, like Photo View 360 renderings out of there. And uh, things that aren't modeled, perhaps there are photos being taken of those items as they go through production, as they go through R&D. And so this content is gathered and, and developed and then brought into a program such as Word. I've seen Adobe Publisher, uh, I'm sorry, Microsoft Publisher, Adobe, um, uh, several different Adobe products that uh, bring that in as well. And um, and then the end result is going to be that PDF. Now where this process falls flat is when you're trying to update. Well, first off, when you're trying to create it, it's a very time-consuming process. But then when you go to update it, the SOLIDWORKS models have updated, there's no automated update method here. You have to go back through, edit the configurations, retake the screenshots, retake the photos, and then when you need to edit the document, like the Word document, you actually have to go into each one of those images, right-click them, replace them, try to locate the new one to just update the control document. So it's a very time-consuming process and one that, you know, of course, we try to, we're trying to improve on and make better. So uh, we have eliminated quite a few steps from this process and the composer solution goes as such where we have the 3D models from SOLIDWORKS. We then bring those 3D models into Composer. And keep in mind, we can do that at any time. We don't have to wait for the design to be totally finished to then bring those models into Composer to start working on it. You can bring it in when the design is halfway done. And then as the design finishes, we can update the information in Composer to reflect what the current design is in SOLIDWORKS. Now, in Composer, we can set it up completely so we have our entire PDF document developed in Composer, and we're simply saving as a PDF. Now, this whole process is associative back to the original SOLIDWORKS files. Update SOLIDWORKS, go into Composer, you just say file, update, it updates, republish out the PDF, archive the old one. So this is the process I'm going to be showing today in detail. There's also an additional process we can do here, which I'll talk in a little bit. And if you've attended my webinars in the past, the other process is the one that I've used to used to really recommend, and I still do today. But I, I like to push this one a little bit harder now because um, 
the other one is mostly to integrate into current processes. This one is to kind of use Composer to its fullest capability. So what we can do here is we can, from Composer, export images and then bring those images into Word and then save that Word as a, as a PDF document. So there's a couple more steps we could add here if we wanted more control over how that end PDF looked. So we'll, we'll go over that briefly as well during the presentation. Okay, so the agenda is going to be uh, what we just did, a SOLIDWORKS Composer overview, and I'll go into uh, Composer and show a few things uh, to complete the overview. Then we're going to go ahead and import a SOLIDWORKS model into Composer, so we're going to start from completely completely from scratch. Uh, there's no good, there's no pre-canned demonstration stuff going on in this, in this presentation. I'm going to open up a blank version of Composer, import the models, and then go from there. I'm going to go through the imported models and prep it for our technical publications and then um, export it out, put it all together, and then we're going to go ahead and publish the controlled document. Now by controlled document, I mean the document that isn't ever going to be edited again. It's a controlled document. That one's going to be revved if we ever have a new one, and then a new controlled document is created. Okay, so let me jump into Composer, and I have a file here that I've already put together. I'm going to go ahead and show this just to give you guys a little idea of what we're going to be doing on the fly. So this is a Composer document that has been completely set up to be printed. As you can see, it's all portrait formatting, 8.5 by 11. I have a, a background set on here, which I'll show you guys how to do that. Our logo is text and then our, our 3D model that's in there as well. Now, of course, when you're in Composer, anything that's 3D, you can rotate, zoom, explode, all that good stuff, recolor. When it's a PDF at the end, it's just going to be for print. Now, if you don't want a printed document, if you want an interactive document, it's the, the whole process is identical. It's just how we publish it at the end, which at the end of the presentation, I'll go, at the, I'll go through the different publishing options so we can hit those topics as well. All right, so the very first page of this, or maybe the second page, depending on how you look at it, would be, you know, which tools are required for this, for this project. And here we have, like, you know, safety glasses, hammer, screwdriver, et cetera. These actually come with Composer. So if you go to the workshops, the image library, there are items that come in when you install the application. But keep in mind, these are just bitmap images. You can use like bitmaps or JPEGs or you know just an image file to then develop your own tools and to drag and drop these into Composer to use them. So it really is that easy. You just go to this directory. You can also specify that this directory is on your network, have Composer linked to it. If you have multiple users, they all can link to it and pull these tools in. So, I mean, to be honest, the, the the ones that come with Composer are pretty limited. We just have these icons here. Um, but we can go through and, and we can really spice that up and add as much content as you need. Okay, so go to the next page. And now we get into the step-by-step -step stuff. So here we have the assembly that's now exploded. We have our, our parts list with all the, the bomb balloons and everything calling it out. We go to the next step that isolates a a sub-assembly, all the components on there with bomb IDs and such. This here, this is what's referred to as a detail view, which we'll go over as well, which is nice because we have a 3D model here. And this is technically not a 3D model. This is a two-dimensional vectorized drawing, but it's still associative back to the original uh, or to the, the models that we have here. And that's done in the technical illustration panel, this little detail view here. You can tell once the detail view is in, if you select it, then you have the ability to update it. So if anything updates later, we can go ahead and update that and uh, keep it live. Uh, again, I'll go into further detail on that as well. Okay, so first step of the process, um, we're going to isolate that little sub-assembly. There's a couple components here, and then basically it goes through a step-by-step -step assembly procedure. So as we can see here is each step of the process is a whole page in the PDF print. So when we print this out, we publish this out as a PDF, every single page here will actually be a page in the, um, which I'll pull up here, which would be the final PDF 
for print instructions. Now, keep in mind, this also uh, is for any detailed views or anything like that, like things like this, so we can really add a lot to a single page. We have a single 3D model, but we can have all these detailed views rasterized and vectorized to really show different angles and different steps of the process. Now, um, this is very powerful, and this is the output from Composer. Now, if you wanted to really control this or perhaps use these images on your website instead of a PDF document, then at that point I would recommend publishing out as images from Composer, which are right here. So basically at that point we have JPEG images. You can print it with, you can publish it with the border, with the border, without the border, uh, just the models. So it's really up to you how you want these images. But once you have the images outside of Composer, we can bring those into websites, we can bring them into you know, InDesign documents, Word documents, uh, Excel sheets, it doesn't matter. All those items are actually linking to these images. So once you update in SOLIDWORKS, you go into Composer, you tell it to update, republish out the images, it saves all these images all in one shot. Whatever you have linking to these is then updated automatically. Again, there's a couple different workflows we can work with here. That's just one of them. The one that we're going to be focusing on today is that printable PDF. Okay, so I have, nope, that's an old one. That was before we got started. Okay, so I think we are good. Let me go ahead and close this down and let's start from scratch here. Uh, before I do, let me just go ahead and show what's in this document, just a little preview. Just this assembling together, then once that subassembly is put together, then of course it's applied to the to the main assembly model. Okay, so close that down and let's go ahead and do this. So first off, I want to show that our SOLIDWORKS assembly um, here, which is going to be a rescue robot, this is, this is the assembly with all the parts in it, and this is what we're going to be bringing to Composer. So this is a 36.2 megabyte um, file. So this is the assembly, all the parts. It's at 36 and a half megs. Our, our composer document here that we after, this is after import, after images have been added, uh, are all of our steps we have there, any animations, so forth, uh, is 2.2 megs. So it's, it's I've seen this on average.